anybody who's calling this uh, bear market, uh, you know, bear market moves back to the downside is, is you know, is this, it's okay, it's a little loco. Uh, this is, you know, this is definitely profit taking. Uh, as Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing okay. So let's let's talk about the tape. So we, we talked about it last night, uh, this really stalling out process in the queues. Members of the queues, a lot of things kind of go went sideways. Uh, we also talked about this area here on the bottom channel uh, off this 335 level. That was going to be a big number. And what happened today was we started seeing um, a lot of weakness very, very quickly. And one of the biggest clues to what a market can do, or what the stocks can do, or what a sentiment can do is kind of just watching the, the pre-market action. And if you saw this morning, uh, Google got an upgrade, uh, Tulo got an upgrade, and Zoom, right? They all got upgraded this morning and they all had one thing in common. They did not move. They absolutely did not move. And not only did they not go higher off these initiations or whatever the case may be on different brokers, they started trickling lower even before the market opened. And based on what we were talking about yesterday, a potential stalemate until Netflix earnings, and we'll get to that in a second, um, we, we kind of knew that the bias was going to be either sideways to down, sideways to down, because that's kind of what they've been demonstrating since kind of straddling this linear regression line. Again, and, and, and before we even go on, just understand one thing. Before we start talking about what happened today, this is not a statement that this is a bear market. You've got to be out of your mind to make a statement like that. Uh, we had a huge move from the 324 level on the queues for two weeks straight. We went sideways. We hit supply. We hit digestion. All this is happening right now, especially uh, yesterday and today, is the product of taking profits, right? The Q's put up a, a $17, $18 candle in eight days until we start losing back that 324 level, which is the 50-day the, the moving average. The idea of calling this a sell bias bear market is crazy. It's just out of its mind. What you can do, call this is profit taking, exactly what it is. And no matter how good a market is, and the market was absolutely amazing, uh, for the last better part of two weeks, you're always going to have some opportunities to the downside as well. And we always talk about being ready uh, for that downside. And because of uh, what I saw or what I didn't see today, uh, out of upgrades in Zoom and Google and uh, Tulo, we kind of start looking at the downside bias. And yeah, I, mean, I put some uh, um, I put some pivots into the upside as well, but there was definitely meat on the bone to uh, the downside. There was an Apple event today. Uh, which was pretty much stale, right? I think that the, the most I got out of it was they're introducing a purple iPhone. Cool, right? It makes me think of Prince, Purple Rain, Dove's Cry. I get it. I get it. I'm feeling it, right? But other than that, it was a complete snooze fest. So I did put a pivot to the upside and obviously uh, it never got that. It really did paint a picture that sellers were coming in, they were taking control. And the two big things after the close uh, obviously people were waiting for was Netflix uh, that was coming out with earnings and the George Floyd, the officer, I forgot his name, name the guy who killed uh, George Floyd, uh, murdered, let's just say, let's, let's keep it what it is, murdered George Floyd. Uh, the verdict is coming out uh, imminent, probably by the time um, I finish this video. So there was a lot of anticipation, but we'll start with uh, Netflix, and we saw big buyers. Remember, this wasn't the first time we talked about it. We saw really big buyers uh, for call buyers deep out of the monies. We, we were watching all week. Uh, they were coming for the 575s, the 595s, the 600s. And if you look at uh, today's order flow, they were coming for the June 620s, 650. So there was a lot of big money being bet on, um, on Netflix. And it really does prove that, you know, no matter – what the bets are. It's all speculation. You could, you could have literally the earnings right in your hand and the stock might completely react uh, completely different on those bets. And all those people are putting hundreds of thousands of dollars on the line uh, going into uh, Netflix earnings. They got nothing to show for it, but uh, expiration of their uh, expiration of their calls uh, pretty much worthless. And it really does tell you is Price action is the key. Does it really make a difference what Netflix said today in earnings? I'm a big fan of Netflix. I use Netflix 
uh, every day. Like, hey, I love the content. I love everything about it. But apparently not everybody does, right? There's a lot of options now. You got Disney Plus, you have Hulu, you have Shmulu, you have everything in between. So there's not, uh, there's not one of these things that it's, it's Netflix or it's nothing at all. I'm a big fan. You don't need to watch it, right? I mean, who knows? But moral of the story, the stock is uh, getting sold pretty pretty aggressively uh, after the close. As you can see, uh, by this candle, they did uh, announce uh, a $5 billion uh, share buyback, which is kind of cool. But again, at the end of the day, uh, price action speaks. And most important, Netflix uh, could definitely set a tone uh, for tomorrow's session for the rest of technology. Keep this in mind. The other big tech heavyweights, uh, the Amazon, the Apples of the world, the, the Facebooks, the Googles of the world, the Teslas, they're reporting next week. So, um, again, I don't know if this this headline or this earnings release on Netflix is going to be kind of a, a, a stigma what's going to happen for the rest of the week. But at least going into tomorrow, um, you know, if I was and today was literally my first day after I started seeing what was going on. Uh, pre-market. This is the first day I could turn around and say, you know what, there, um, there is some sell bias here. There is some value here. Uh, we'll go through the pivots in a second. And, you know, we could definitely uh, take advantage uh, of that value. So if you go into tomorrow's session, I mean, look, the, are, are there names you can look to tomorrow on the upside? You know, like maybe like a Walmart, right? And again, maybe it's not a traditional name, but maybe like a Walmart, uh, maybe a name, uh, you know, some of the financials got really, really sold off today, and those are really big drivers. But I have to say, I mean, even even after, uh, or even before, excuse me, uh, Netflix came out with earnings, I was already kind of making my watch list, and I said, look, there's, a, there's probably a day two uh, for some areas that we could take advantage of on the sell side tomorrow. And, and again, I, I, I will uh, keep on reiterating this point. Until we lose uh, 324 on the close, this is all just a healthy uh, back test uh, from a tremendous move. So anybody who's calling this uh, bear market, uh, you know, bear market moves back to the downside is, is you know, is this it's okay? It's a little loco. Uh, this is you know, this is definitely profit taking. Uh, is it possible if the earnings this you know this quarter come out terrible? Is it possible we could back test uh, all the way to the fifty day moving average? Listen, and in this market, anything is possible. But again, until we start using the word sell biased. Can we at least lose the 50-day moving average uh, where all this big rally started from? I think that's a very, very uh, fair point. So again, listen, if you are uh, buying stocks all the way at the top in the last you know, three, four days of kind of stalemate before we started selling off yesterday uh, and selling off today, is it going to hurt you? Yeah, I know. Yeah, probably, right? It's probably going to hurt you. But again, this is the difference between knowing where stocks break out or where stocks continue. And unfortunately, uh, if you are a short-term trader, and you have to, you really have to know your levels. We, uh, this is the first close today below uh, the 10-day moving average, which is kind of important, right? You know, stocks go in cycles; they go from the five to the 10. And if you believe uh, that stocks trade from supply to supply, supply, you have to, you know, kind of believe that stocks. Uh, possibly could trade uh, demand uh, to demand. So here's the next demand zone, uh, which is 331 uh, on the queue. So if you go through uh, some of the names today, and again, it, the biggest challenge, one of the biggest challenges when you have such an aggressive market, right? Uh, one of the biggest challenges is finding value, okay? Really, you know, finding value to the downside, because keep this in mind, everything is way above their channel. So you're not pretty much every day going to be looking for a $10, $15 move, considering how high some of these stocks are. But there is going to be value. There are going to be names that if you look for and you do your research day in, day out, which again, every single trader, no matter uh, what their ability levels, no matter what uh, their stage of their career is, everybody should be putting in the work. You will see some good value. So last night, uh, we talked about in the video, right? We talked about in the video, it stopped here uh, two separate times. It confirmed today, had a, it had a really nice move. We talked about Roku uh, last night on the video. Again, held this whole level here and just not only did it go down six, seven points from the pivot, uh, now it's you know now it's down 14 after the close, uh, sympathy to uh, the Netflix move. So there's definitely some jittery uh, bulls at really, really high levels. Always remember the market doesn't care 
uh, you know, what you think or, you know, you know, your opinion. The market cares about your know, structure, right? And this is uh, obviously a very, very good structured market right now. It went from a big move from the 324 Qs all the way up to into the 340 level. And now it's just called profit taking after a very, very big move. And the most important part is recognize this early. Uh, not get obsessed with stocks that are up eight, nine days in a row. Again, if you've been watching this broadcast, we've been kind of talking of that with, with, with nausea and really being pay attention uh, to levels. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about today. Uh, actually, kept a piece of a position uh, overnight. Uh, on, well, I'll show you one of the one of the pivots here. But you know, again, you know, I started putting in I started putting in some pivots to the upside, and then I started putting some pivots into the downside. So Netflix reports after the close. Obviously, this was this was early in the morning. Uh, let's see if it has a pre-earnings run up. 560 is a big spot of supply. If it builds, can run up to 566, 567. Let me tell you one thing. I watched literally Netflix go from 560 to 565, or 564 and a half, in about 10 seconds. Okay, unless you were a high-frequency robot. There was no liquidity. I'm talking about it. it literally went up four or five points in about 15 seconds. There was absolutely no liquidity. It, it felt like it ran up on on air. Okay, so if you somehow got this trade, God bless. I just literally watched it go from 560 to 565 in seconds. There was absolutely no liquidity. Uh, Apple again had their day. Uh, pretty much a yawn fest, right? The biggest thing again, like I mentioned earlier, purple iPhone. Okay, right? Barney Prince, right? Uh, Billy 108 needs to build, never got there. Goldman Sachs 344, 345 needs to build, never got there. VCRX 1160, 117, never got there. As you can see, a lot of things didn't get there. But then I started putting the pivots into the downside, and they, you know, some, they came in pretty aggressively. Again, congratulations for you guys uh, who did catch these trades. 608, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, 601 is the first target. Again, nobody's looking for demolishment or uh, you know the, the end of the world. Again, we're just talking about levels coming in from uh, demand zones to demand zones after a big run-up. So uh, 608 for bills below can flush. 601 first target. Here was uh, Nvidia, right? Here was Nvidia. Took out the 608 level. This whole level here went right through uh, the 10-day moving average all the way down to uh, 598. Not a bad move at all. Uh, good job for all you guys who caught it. Uh, Baidu, not a huge move, but again, not that's the whole point. You're not going to get huge moves on a lot of names, right? Uh, Baidu, 207.50, 207, if it builds below, it can flush. Uh, 197, I still like it. I still think it goes lower um, and probably goes lower tomorrow. But here was Baidu. Again, not a huge move at all. So it took out this whole channel here uh, and traded down to the 204s. Uh, I do believe if it starts confirming down that 204 channel, you can still get down to 290, uh, that 197 level, especially if the market continues to kind of sell into tomorrow. So again, two, two and a half dollars, uh, not, the, you know, not the biggest one in the world. I'm still uh, short this thing. I actually got short in the 1457 level, uh, 57 area, four, 1450, this is kind of macro control. If it builds below, can flush. Uh, and look at the IQ's chart, and this is why I kept it uh, overnight. This is a big, big move. If you guys remember from that unwinding, uh, the low here was 1460, right? Uh, stock pretty much closed at the lows, and now the stock is trading uh, 1404 here after hours. It's, you know, there, there's a big offer uh, walking it down. So hopefully, who knows, maybe there's one more surge tomorrow and this thing gets down into the 13th. Who the hell knows? So uh, I still like this thing uh, for tomorrow as well. So nice move there. Uh, Roku, 354, if it builds below, can flush. First target, 348, right? Here was Roku, right? So here's the 348 level, excuse me, 354. And here's the 349. And obviously the stock is traded down to like 336 uh, after hours is getting absolutely destroyed here on the Netflix uh, on the Netflix reaction. And I think that's about it. Take on the way down, right? Take on the way down, new lows, blah, 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 new lows. Yeah, I mean, so look, you're not going to get 20 star uh, setups because everything is so high and had such a big runs. But again, like I said a few minutes ago, you could take advantage of what's going on. Again, stocks don't go straight up, stocks don't go straight down. And again, if you're an investor in these companies, does it really make a difference what it's going to do tomorrow? Probably not, right? But if you are a trader and you trade both sides of the market, your job is to identify the best value and trade accordingly. So guys, have a great night, everybody. Uh, now that the spring is here, my kids have, you know, my daughter has had a softball game yesterday. She has a softball game literally after I record, I have to take it to that. And then after that, I take my son to his basketball game. 
dad life, baby. Dad life. Guys, have a great night. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.